humanity. He went from Jordan to the West Bank today, making him the very first pope to enter the Palestinian territory without first passing through Israel. And during his meeting with Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas, Pope Francis urged Palestinians and Israelis to make sacrifices for the sake of peace. And at a mass in Bethlehem's manger square, the traditional birthplace of Jesus, the Pope spoke out against the mistreatment of children around the globe. He then took his message of brotherhood to Tel Aviv, where he was greeted by Israeli President Shimon Peres and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. Pope Francis invited Perez to join Abbas at the Vatican next month to pray for peace. And now we've learned both leaders have accepted that invitation. His Middle East journey marks the anniversary of a historic meeting that took place in Jerusalem a half century ago. Our Lauren Green, in fact, picks up that part of our coverage from there. She's in our New York City newsroom. Lauren, good to see you. Hey, Harris. Well, you know, a lot of news today about Pope Francis wading into Palestinian and Israeli peace talks. But... The focal point of his pilgrimage is to commemorate this 50th anniversary of a historical meeting between Pope Paul VI of the Catholic Church and the Ecumenical Patriarch Athena Goras of the Eastern Orthodox Churches. And it, too, has some political overtones. The meeting between Pope Francis and the Ecumenical Patriarch Bartholomew is a display of Christian unity between the world's two largest denominations at a time when Christian persecution is high, especially in countries with a Muslim majority. So what they're going to do is continue that light of love, the light of shared values, the light of truth, followers of Jesus Christ, and proclaim it to the world. Father Alex Carluzos of the Greek Orthodox Church of America is leading a delegation of famous Greek Orthodox from the United States, including billionaire businessman and philanthropist John Katsimatidis. I'm taking my children, I'm taking my in-laws, I'm taking other important people with me because I think... I believe it's part of history. With ancient chanting and black garb, the Eastern Orthodox Church seems a world apart from Roman Catholicism. Yet Pope John Paul II called them two lungs of the same body. The followers of the Apostle Peter, the Roman Catholics, and the followers of the Apostle Andrew, the Orthodox, had for nearly a thousand years been estranged, torn apart by geopolitical and theological conflicts. Their bonds severed permanently in 1054 A.D. What you have in 1054 is really um, uh, a sort of combustible mixture of difficult personalities, the political pressures of the Byzantine Empire losing one of their prized possessions in Sicily, um, and the fact that um, the German aristocracy is pulling the strings in Rome. Now, the meeting between the two so-called brothers is largely symbolic, but more importantly, it's an image of strength shown to an increasingly hostile world that there's more that binds Christians than separates them. Harris? Lauren, thank you very much.